Good morning and welcome as we celebrate uh, Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. And uh, this is Most Pair to Mary Parish. Our parish mission is we love, we strive to love God with all our hearts, uh, to love our neighbor as ourselves, bring Christ to others. It's how we imitate the most pure heart of Mary. Welcome to all special groups, special people throughout, I think, the country uh, who are watching us at this time. I do want to do um, a few announcements before Mass. Palm Sunday, usually we get the blessed palms, and unfortunately this year that is uh, abrogated, which means we don't do it um, because of the safety precautions we're, we're all taking at this time. But I'm telling everybody, guess what? You do have two blessed palms with you right now. Yeah. Uh, and I probably personally blessed them many times because God gave us two. We got two palms and I've blessed you many times. So uh, God has given us what we need. The reading, the second reading in the Liturgy of the Hours today was from St. Andrew of uh, Crete. He said, let us not lay down branches or our cloaks before Jesus, but lay our very selves down before Jesus. So thank you for coming to worship with us today. I also want to know, uh, note the, a difference. Since we're not here in person, um, our collection doesn't work the same way, and uh, we can't pass a basket. So we're so appreciative to all our benefactors. And just a reminder, the parish still has to pay all its bills, and uh, we appreciate your donations. We have ways to do that electronically, especially through Faith Direct. But many folks are mailing um, their tithing, and they can drop it off at our office. Uh, there's a way to do that if you come during the normal, our normal current business hours, which I think are Monday through Friday, 8.30 through 3 p.m. And we so appreciate that, and we really do need that. I also want to inform you on this Holy Week what the schedule will be. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are normal. We'll have our 8 a.m. Mass. Thursday is Holy Thursday. There's no morning Mass that will be videoed. But there's the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. And that will be at 7 p.m. Thursday night. So please join us uh, through this. Friday is Good Friday. Remember, it's a day of abstinence and fasting. And we will only have the service at 3 p.m. Uh, live streamed. Uh, but of course, you can watch it later if that time doesn't work for you. Then uh, Saturday is Holy Saturday. We have the Easter Vigil. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't bring the new uh, Catholics into the church at this time. We'll do that when we can. Uh, but it still will be an amazing Easter Vigil. And that will be uh, Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, we'll have our normal uh, Sunday time that we've been doing this at 9.30 a.m. And uh, please join us for all those things. So at this time, um, let us greet one another. And please join us in our... Uh, Pre-mass prayer, we need his help and protection at this time more than ever. The, let's join in praying the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Our celebrant today will be Father Swami.
six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice they cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy, O gates, lift up your hands, grow higher ancient doors. Let him enter the King of Glory. Who is the King of Glory? He, the Lord of Hosts, he is the King of Glory. Hosanna in the Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today, welcome you all to celebrate the Feast of the Palm Sunday. The Church celebrates the sixth Sunday of Lent as both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. This is the time of year we stop to remember and relive the events which brought about our redemption and salvation. What we commemorate and relive during this week is not just Jesus dying and rising, but our own dying and rising in Him, which will result in our healing, reconciliation, and redemption. Attentive participation in the Holy Week liturgies will surely deepen our relationship with God, increase our faith, and strengthen our lives as disciples of Jesus. Let us, therefore, faithfully participate in the given best possible ways and means to enjoy His reign in our lives. Now, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled. 
have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers close in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give, him glo give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My, my God, God, my God, God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was, not, he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and, er and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, 
What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord, he said in reply. He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Ju Judas his betrayer said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many, for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the wine, until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, this night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples. He found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray, that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, 
saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand. When the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners, get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, the man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my father, and he will not provide me at this moment? with more than twelve legions of angels. But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber, with the swords and clubs who seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, Yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, finally two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and with, within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed, but further need have we of witnesses. You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. 
A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. This is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I have suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, his blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head, and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, 
Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him, and took the reed, and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and the elders mocked him and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel? Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. 
But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. I think this uh, special Holy Week in my life will remain till the end of my life. This is my first experience celebrating the Holy Week in Kansas. Today's liturgy combines contrasting moments, one of glory, the other of suffering. The royal welcome of Jesus in Jerusalem and the drama of the trial culminating in crucifixion, death, and burial for the Christ. It was Palm Sunday but because of a sore throat, five-year-old Johnny stayed home from church with his sitter. When the family returned home, they were carrying several palm fronds. Seeing the palm fronds, Johnny asked them what they were for. People held them over Jesus' head as he walked by, his father told him, Wouldn't you know it? Johnny fumed, Oh, the one Sunday I don't go, and he shows up. <clears throat> we don't have the public worship coming to the church this year. But still, this may be a kind of tough time for some still in the homes. Today's first reading, the third of the four servant songs, like the other three, foreshadows Jesus' own life and mission. The second reading from St. Paul to the Philippians is an ancient Christian hymn representing a very early Christian understanding of who Jesus is and of how his mission saves us from sin and death. The Gospel challenges us to examine our own lives in the light of some of the characters in the passion story like Peter who denied Jesus, Judas who betrayed Jesus, Herod who ridiculed Jesus, Pilate who acted against his conscience as he condemned Jesus to death on the cross and 
the leaders of the people who preserved their position by getting rid of Jesus. I don't like to be longer. To be short, I invite you today to answer personally for yourself with deep examination of conscience the following five questions. Does Jesus weep over you? Your sinful soul, as he wept over Jerusalem at the beginning of his Palm Sunday procession? Are you a barren fig tree? God expects us to produce fruits of holiness, purity, justice, humility, obedience, charity, and forgiveness. Do you or worse, do you continue to produce bitter fruits of impurity, injustice, pride, hatred, jealousy, or selfishness? Third, will Jesus need to cleanse you, your heart, with his whip? Jesus cannot tolerate the desecration of the temple of the Holy Spirit in us by our addiction to uncharitable, unjust, and impure thoughts, words, and deeds. Neither does Jesus praise our business mentality or calculation of loss or gain in our relationship with God. Four, do you welcome Jesus into your heart, into your homes, as your Lord and Savior? Five, are you like the humble animal that carried Jesus, bringing Jesus universal love, unconditional forgiveness, and sacrificial service to our families, places of work, and communities by the way we live our lives? We do certainly need Mother Mary's prayerful assistance. In the world, due to the mandatory lockdowns or stay-at-home orders, the faithful will not be even able to attend or to attest to the assist to the Holy Week liturgies. Now, more than ever, our homes must become true domestic churches that learn from our Lady of Sorrows to contemplate the mystery of Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. May her prayerful support be with you and your family in this time of need. May the King of Kings, King of our hearts, Jesus our Savior be with you and reign your life with his peace, joy and love. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, true light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with the joy of this celebration, let us now offer all our needs and those of the world. Your response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may strive to have the same mind as Christ as we offer our lives in loving service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that as we recall Christ dying and rising, we may recognize how God fills us and raises us up as we allow ourselves to be empty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced abandonment or betrayal, and for those who have been deserted by family or friends, that God's Spirit will comfort them and help them to hold fast to the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of government and business, that in Jesus they may recognize how to be servant leaders and give priority to the needs of the most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for human life, that every heart may honor the mystery of human life at all stages along life's journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer the effects of the coronavirus, for those who work to care for, for them, for all our public servants, that God will strengthen and protect them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and an end to violence, that the death of Christ may turn all hearts from violence and give them courage to seek new ways to resolve conflicts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Rose Lee, wife of Don Lee, Don Brentlinger, husband of Carolyn, Eric Conley, son of Tom and Barb Conley, and James Wirtz, that they may find healing and fullness of life and God's presence, and their families and friends find comfort in their time of loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those for whom this Mass is offered, Justin McGarity on the ninth anniversary of his death. For all the most pure heart of Mary parishioners, for Rex Curry, and for Marcella Montgomery, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all blessings, King of our heart, these are the prayers offered before you. Answer us according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the grace and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not meditate by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all we have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries 
for on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of him. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints. On his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await to the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, if you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just yet through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.